Uh, we've done football, so it really is time to go on the market uh, with a bit of poetry. And Private Eye is very privileged to have on our books the world's worst poet, Sir William McGonagall. Um, and he wrote a poem for us about the Speaker of the House of Commons, who again has got into a bit of trouble this week. Um, and I'd like to welcome onto the stage uh, the previous editor of Private Eye, Mr. Richard Ingrams. <laughs> to deliver the ballad of Speaker Martin. <clears throat> now I'll gather ye round, good men and true, for I have a tale to tell to you. I tell the story of Speaker Martin, a bonny lad through the land of the tartan. <laughs> he was born of humble folk in Glasgow too. On the social scale, you could nae gang further do. <laughs> Barefoot, we Michael walked the cobbled streets until he got a job hammering metal sheets. His fellow workers soon chose him as their leader, saying, "Young McMartin is a canny wee bleeder," and so he became a union boss. And for the greedy capitalists, he gave ne'er a toss. <coughs> In time, he was elected as a Labour MP. Spring Burn was the name of his constituency, until one day, as fate transpired. The well-loved speaker, Betty Boothroyd, suddenly retired. When the, men, when the MPs needed her successor to pick, who did they choose but the unknown Mick? For we abused Mr. Martin, it was his lucky day, a cushy job and loads of extra pay. So see him now, enthroned in glory, on one side Labour, on the other Tory, with his buckled shoes and braided gown. Was there any finer sight in London town? There he presided, shouting, Order, order! This once humble lad, pray not for the border. But alack for the hapless Glasgow lad. At being the speaker, he turned out to be extremely bad. <laughs> Fumbling and stumbling, he made such a mess that it eventually caught the attention of the press. These slabs on my reputation are making me sick, said Martin. Why, they are calling me Gordon's Mick. These jumped up toffs from the public schools are accusing me of breaking parliamentary rules. This is just an attack on the working class. That Quentin Lex from the Daily Mail can kiss my ass. <laughs> it must be admitted that Mick could be quite coarse. He would scream profanities until his voice was hoarse. He had even been heard to shout, Oh, fuck! Get me the services of libel lawyers, Carter Rack! <laughs> but the more he protested, the deeper the hacks dug, and the smile on Mick's face became ever less smug. Every day there came a new revelation to shock the hard-working folk of the British nation. Taxes to Tesco for his wife to go shopping for items of food, such as tomato pizza topping. <laughs> Free travel by air for his wife and his bands, worth almost as much as the average man earns. Soon there arose a universal shout. It's time to throw young old booby out. Of this posturing ninny, we are heartily sick. It's time for ye to gang awa, ye ghastly goggles mick. 